Hello and welcome to 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a written letter to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, dealing with solid fraternal relations between the two countries and peoples and ways of boosting them. The letter was handed over to the Saudi Foreign Minister, His Highness Prince Faisal bin Fahan bin Abdullah, during a meeting with the Bahraini Ambassador in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Hamoud bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. They discussed bilateral relations and ways of bolstering them as well as regional and international issues of common interest. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace the Saudi Minister of Commerce, Dr. Majid bin Abdullah Al Khazabi. The Minister conveyed the greetings and appreciation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, and His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and their wishes of abundant health and happiness for His Majesty and continuous progress and prosperity for Bahrain. His Majesty welcomed the Saudi Minister and asked him to convey his greetings to the custodian of the two holy mosques and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and his wishes of abundant health and happiness. He also wished the Saudi people further advancement and progress under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Majesty expressed pride in historic relations binding the two kingdoms and the development and growth of bilateral cooperation and coordination in all fields, especially in commerce. He hailed the efforts and endeavours of the custodian of the two holy mosques to strengthen Bahraini Saudi ties in all fields. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the generous hospitality and for his keenness on bolstering bilateral historic ties in all fields. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakir Palace, the Speaker of the UAE Federal and National Council, the FNC, Saga bin Gabash, upon his visit to the Kingdom. The FNC Speaker conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan, the UAE Vice President and Prime Minister, and Dubai Ruler, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan and their wishes of further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom and its people. His Majesty welcomed the SNC Speaker and asked him to convey his greetings to the President of the UAE and to the Vice President, Prime Minister and Dubai Ruler, as well as the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces. His Majesty also wished the people of the UAE further prosperity and progress. He expressed pride in the deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE which continued to grow in light of the mutual keenness to further bolster them at all levels. His Majesty affirmed that such visits contribute to consolidating cooperation, exchanging expertise concerning parliamentary and democratic action and strengthening coordination with regard to various joint causes. His Majesty hailed the role of the Council in both countries and their contributions to consolidating Bahraini-Emirati relations at the official and local levels, as well as their efforts in supporting the Progress and Development March in both countries. For his part, Speaker Gabash expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his keenness on strengthening bilateral relations in all fields and consolidating parliamentary cooperation to benefit both the Kingdom and the UAE. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sport, Head of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, patronised the third edition of the annual race, President's Run. More than 200 athletes took part in the race, which was organised by the American University of Bahrain, the AUB, under the theme, hashtag, one team, one run. His Highness Sheikh Khaled was received on arrival by AUB President, Dr. Su Susan Saxton and other administrative and academic personnel. His Highness was presented with a commemorative gift on the occasion from the AUB administrative personnel before touring the AUB sports complex. In a statement on this occasion, he commended the university for organising the annual race, stressing the importance of sports for individuals and particularly students. 
For her part, the AUB president expressed pride in His Highness's patronage of the annual AUB race. The Representatives Council held its weekly meeting under the chairmanship of Speaker Fazea Zanal. The Council reviewed the letters of the Shura and Representative Council's Affairs Minister regarding 70 proposals submitted by members of the Council. The Council also reviewed the nomination list for the membership of permanent qualitative committees which were approved by the Council in the second meeting. A list of members were also decided to draft a reply to His Majesty the King's speech, in addition to a list stipulating the members of the Kingdom's Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division. An Emirati parliamentary delegation arrived to the Kingdom of Bahrain, led by the Speaker of the UAE Federal National Council, the FNC, Saga bin Gabash. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Vazir Zanal, was at the forefront to receive Speaker Gabash, along with members of the Council's Bahrain UAE Fraternity Committee. The visit of the Emirati delegation stems from the keenness of the Legislative Authority to bolster parliamentary diplomacy, particularly with brotherly Gulf and Arab countries, and to further consolidate bilateral cooperation in light of the deep-rooted historic fraternal relations. The visit is expected to include a number of discussion sessions that aim to further develop the course of parliamentary cooperation, 
increase the effectiveness of the agreement signed and unify visions with regard to various causes. The Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization, Alesco, honored Her Highness at Sheikha Moza bin Hamid Al Khalifa Secondary Girls School in recognition of the excellence in participations in which Arab and international events were celebrated during 2021. On this occasion, the Minister of Education and Chairman of Bahrain National Committee for Education, Science and Culture, Dr. Majid bin Ali al Nawemi, visited the school with a gold medal and certificate of honour were presented to the school principal and to a member of the Permanent Scientific Committee of the school system affiliated with the LESCO from Bahrain. The Minister praised the school's distinguished efforts in celebrating international events by implementing a number of activities and producing videos related to these events, despite the conditions of the pandemic. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, took part in the ministerial meeting of the World Bank Group, the WBG, held on the sidelines of the annual meeting of the Board of Governors of the WBG and the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, attended by the World Bank Group President, David R. Malpass, and the Arab countries' finance ministers and central bank governors. An, an virtual meeting discussed the latest developments regarding the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic and the impact on the economies of Arab countries. Addressing the virtual meeting, the finance minister stressed that the challenges posed by the pandemic proved the importance of investing in human capital to be the main focus of development strategies, as plans as its basic pillar for the key to success. In this regard, the minister indicated that in with the directors of His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the kingdom has launched many initiatives in this field, especially those related to empowering youth and enhancing their effective contribution to development paths in addition to a number of programmes that have increased women's contributions and progress across various fields. He stressed that the Kingdom attaches great importance to supporting and developing skills and training for individuals, making Bahraini workforce more diversified and involved in the labour market, adding that the Bahraini human resources have become one of the elements of investment attraction thanks to their innovative spirit, capabilities and skills that qualify them to succeed in various fields of work. The Minister pointed out that this results have shown the beginning of the economic recovery are the outcome of the success of the national efforts in addressing the pandemic, noting that combating the virus and the recovery phase requires stepping up international cooperation to ensure support for countries in overcoming the effects of the pandemic. The Finance Minister commended the crucial role played by the World Bank Group and the results it has achieved in mitigating economic and social repercussions caused by COVID-19 in countries all over the world. The Finance Minister also took part in the annual meeting held by the IMF remotely in the presence of IMF Managing Director Christina Georgieva, with the participation of Finance Ministers, Central Bank Governors and Heads of Regional Financial Institutions from the Middle East, North Africa, Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Prime Minister's Office, the PMO, announced the names of the successful candidates for the seventh intake of the PM Fellowship Programme. The candidates selected following a rigorous evaluation process are as follows. Osama Jamil Asadik from the Electricity and Water Authority, the EWA. Bada Abdul Majid Al Shabani from a Bahrain Institute for Pearls and Gemstones, Danat. Hassan Haider Ibrahim from Bahrain Petroleum Company, Babco. Khalid Ahmed Al Nima from Bahrain Airport Company, BAC. Zara Abdul Al Shama from the Labour Fund, Tamkeen. Salman Hassan Al Zati from the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning. Saar Joseph Talafad from the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. Sosan Amr Mandil from the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning. Shaima Shaka Almer from the National Space Science Agency, the NSSA. Suba Tariq Al Jalama from the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism. Fatima Abbas Ahmed from the Labour Fund, Tamkeen. Fatima Seed Al Aradi from the National Communication Centre, the NCC. Mohammed Abdul Majid Alawadi from the Ministry of Health. Mohammed Khalid Nur from the Ministry of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning. And Musab Ali Khalhaldi from the Ministry of Interior. The Director General of the PMO and General Secretary of the Cabinet, Hamid bin Faisal Al Malki, congratulated the successful candidates of the 7th PM Fellowship Programme, highlighting the importance of the programme in bolstering the skill set of young government professionals to contribute to the Kingdom's goals 
in line with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's vision. Al Malki noted that previous editions of the programme have successfully demonstrated the capabilities of the Bahraini workforce, adding that their creative efforts continue to play a role in transforming the Kingdom's challenges into opportunities. The PM Fellowship is an ambitious Yu Yong programme that refines and cultivates the skills and capabilities of young Bahraini leaders working in the public sector, enabling them to assist in the Kingdom's ongoing comprehensive development. The General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security of the Ministry of Interior is working to increase its awareness campaigns for citizens and residents in the field of crime prevention and control, based on the principle of community partnership that contributes to strengthening response and developing the means of protection. Awareness is considered an essential aspect in the field of crime prevention and it is no less important than efforts exerted to combat crime. The Anti-Economic Crimes Department has received many cases about several individuals which were there seeking profits and revenues through investing in trading in stocks and cryptocurrencies. These individuals have opened the accounts after watching advertisements on social media and uh, they share their information via phone calls and emails uh, with these platforms. The accounts were opened and they transferred the money to it. They showed them that they were getting profits. but. Unfortunately, they haven't received any profit or revenues and couldn't take back their investment. The money was transferred out of Bahrain from some scammers, which were there targeting people through social media and phone calls. We call upon citizens and residents to be cautious before investing their money in such platforms. The Central Bank of Bahrain has accredited some platforms for trading, and we suggest everyone to use this platform for such purposes. The concerned directorates of the Ministry of Interior are working to increase their awareness campaigns in the relevant fields, including the General Directorate of Anti-Corruption and Economic and Electronic Security, which works continuously to educate citizens and residents on how to combat phishing messages and report them. The awareness process is based on the principle of community partnership, since awareness is a community process which is based on communication in a way that contributes to delivering the media message to the target audience in the required manner. Bahrain was the first country in the region to license crypto companies. This is due, of course, to its wise leadership and also the guidance of the Central Bank of Bahrain. Being a regulated crypto company are required to undergo strict security and auditing measures. This further protects the client's money from fraud or theft. Also, clients are required to provide us with certain documents to verify their identity. Also, we highly recommend clients to only use licensed and regulated crypto exchanges in this region. This protects their money from fraud or theft. And we highly also recommend our clients to check our social media accounts, so, such as on Twitter or Instagram, to get the latest updates on Maine's products and also security advices. Compliance with the guidelines remains essential in strengthening the response and developing the means of protection against any fraud. Bahrain Petroleum Company, BAPCO, announced its success in facing the unprecedented challenges of the oil and gas industry has witnessed due to the outbreak of the pandemic. The company was able to continue to achieve the best results and indicators with regard to the refinery's operations. We were joined earlier on the phone by the chairman and CEO of Bahrain Petroleum Company, Dr. Dawood Nassif, who talked about how Babco was able to achieve its highest refining rates despite all the challenges imposed by the pandemic. The last 18 months have been unprecedented in our business uh, because of the pandemic and other challenges. However, maintaining safe and reliable operations is always our focus. And plant reliability was maintained at its highest level in the last five years, enabling us to deliver much higher crude runs than anticipated. And that improved reliability has also result, resulted in minimum loss profit opportunities, which is the lowest we've achieved in the last 17 years. All this is achieved through sustained operation and teamwork throughout the organization from executive level to middle level to the operating level. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,171,211 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,134,060 had taken the second. 
and 405,920 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 637, with 84 recoveries and 70 registered new cases. 12 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 53 are contacts of active cases and 5 are travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus. The Ministry of Information and all its affiliates have mourned Saud Abdullah Saleh Dwasan, the video shooting specialist at the News Directorate who passed away today. The deceased has been known for his high morals and dedication at work since joining the Ministry in 2013. The Ministry of Information extends its sincere condolences to the family of the deceased and the media community, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest his soul in vast paradise and bless his family with patience and consolation.